Hi, Year 6, and welcome to Friday's reading. Now, today we are going to finish off Chapter 6, and then you're going to go away and do some comprehension questions. So read up, make sure you're listening, and then we're going to answer these questions. There was a howl of anger and surprise from the goblins. Loud cried the Lord of the Eagles, to whom Gandalf had now spoken. Back swept the great birds that were with him, and down they came like huge black shadows. The wolves yammered and gnashed their teeth. The goblins yelled and stamped with rage, and flung their heavy spears in the air in vain. Over them swooped the eagles. The dark rush of their beating wings smote them to the floor or drove them far away. Their talons tore at goblin faces. Other birds flew to the treetops and seized the dwarves, who were scrambling up now as far as they dared to go. Poor little Bilbo, who was nearly left behind again. He just managed to catch hold of Dory's legs, as Dory was borne off last of all, and up they went together, above the tumult and the burning, Bilbo swinging in the air with his arms nearly breaking. Now, far below, the goblins and the wolves were scattered in far and wide in the woods. A few eagles were still circling and sweeping above the battleground. The flames above the trees suddenly sprang up about the highest branches. They went up in crackling fire. There was a sudden flurry of sparks and smoke. Bilbo had escaped only just in time. Soon the light of the burning was faint below, a red twinkle on the black floor, and they went up high in the sky, rising all the time in strong, sweeping circles. Bilbo never forgot that flight, clinging on to Dory's ankles. He moaned, my arms, my arms, but Dory groaned, my poor legs, my poor legs. At the best of times, heights made Bilbo giddy. He used to turn queer if he looked over the edge of quite a little cliff, and he had never liked ladders, let alone trees, never having had to escape from wolves before. So you can imagine now his head swam down. When he looked down between his dangling toes and saw the dark lands opening wide underneath him, touched here and there with the light of the moon on a hillside rock or a stream in the plains, the pale peaks of the mountains were coming nearer, moonlit spikes of rock sticking out of black shadows. Summer or not, it seemed very cold. He shut his eyes and wondered if he could hold on any longer. Then he imagined what would happen if he did not. He felt sick. The flight ended only just in time for him, just before his arms gave way. He loosed Dory's ankles with a gasp and fell onto the rough platform on an eagle's eyrie. There he lay without speaking, and his thoughts were a mixture of surprise at being saved from the fire and fear lest he fall off that narrow place into the deep shadows on either side. He was feeling very queer indeed in his head by the time after the dreadful adventures of the last three days with next to nothing to eat, and he found himself saying aloud, Now I know what a piece of bacon feels like when it is suddenly picked out of a pan on a fork and put back on the shelf. No you don't, he heard Dory answering, because the bacon knows that it will get back in the pan sooner or later. It is hoped we shan't. Also, eagles aren't forks. Oh no, not a bit like storks. Forks, I mean, said Bilbo, sitting up and looking anxiously at the eagle who was perched close by. He wondered what other nonsense he had been saying, and if the eagle would think it rude. You ought not to be rude to an eagle, when you're the size of a hobbit, and are up up in his eyrie at night. The eagle only sharpened his beak on a stone, and trimmed his feathers and took no notice. Soon another eagle flew up. The Lord of the Eagles bids you to bring your prisoners to the great shelf, he cried, and was off again. The other seized Dory in his claws, and flew away with him in the night, leaving Bilbo all alone. He had just strength to wonder what the messenger had meant by prisoners and to begin to think of being torn up for supper like a rabbit when his own turn came. The eagle came back, seized him in his talons by the back of his coat and swooped off. This time he flew only a short way. Very soon Bilbo was laid down trembling with fear on a wide shelf of rock on the mountainside. There was no path down on it to save by flying and no path down off it except by jumping over a precipice. Then he found all the others sitting with their backs to the mountain wall. The Lord of the Eagles also was there and was speaking to Gandalf. It seemed that Bilbo was not going to be eaten after all. The wizard and the eagle lord appeared to know one another slightly, and even be on friendly terms. As a matter of fact, Gandalf, who had often been in the mountains, 
had once rendered a service to the eagles and healed their lord from an arrow room. So you see, prisoners had meant prisoners rescued from the goblins only, and not captives of the eagles. As Bilbo listened to the talk of Gandalf, he realised that at last they were going to escape really and truly from the dreadful mountains. He was discussing plans with the great eagle for carrying the dwarves and himself and Bilbo far away and setting them down well on their journey across the plains below. The Lord of the Eagles would not take them anywhere near where men lived. They would shoot at us with their great bows of you, he said, for they would think we were after their sheep and at times they'd be right. No, we're glad to cheat the goblins of their sport and glad to repay our thanks to you, but we will not risk ourselves for dwarves in the southward plains. Very well, said Gandalf. Take us where and as far as you will. We are already deeply obliged to you, but in the meantime we are famished with hunger. I'm nearly dead of it, said Bilbo in a weak little voice that nobody heard. That can perhaps be mended, said the Lord of the Eagles. Later on you might have seen a bright fire on the shelf of rock and the figures of the dwarves round it cooking and making a fine roasting smell. The eagles had brought up dry bows for fuel, and they had bought rabbits, hares and small sheep. The dwarves managed all the preparations. Bilbo was too weak to help, and anyway, he was not much good at skinning rabbits or cutting up meat, being used to having it delivered by the butcher or ready to cook. Gandalf too was lying down, and after doing his part and setting the fire going, since Oin and Gloin had lost their tinderboxes, dwarves had never taken to matches, even yet. So ended the adventures of the Misty Mountains. Soon Bilbo's stomach was feeling full and comfortable again, and he felt he could sleep contentedly, though really he would have liked to have a loaf of butter, loaf and butter, better than bits of meat toasted on sticks. He slept curled up on the hard rock more soundly than he had ever done on his own feather bed in his own little hole at home. But all night he dreamed of his own house, and wandered his sleep into all his different rooms, looking for something that he could not find, nor remember what it looked like. Okay, so we have finished, and the Hobbit and the Dwarves have finally made it over the mountains, not without many troubles along the way, but the Eagles eventually came to rescue them, and they managed to escape the Wolves and the Goblins. Re, uh, jo- now you need to go away, and you need to answer the questions. So we've got some comprehension questions to answer on chapter six and really understand, you know, what's happened in that chapter. Because poor people, they've just come out of the mines and Bilbo's just fought off Gollum. And then they're up trees and hiding from wolves and more goblins turn up. So recently they haven't had the best luck. So you need to go over now and you need to answer the questions for chapter six. Remember to post your work to Dojo.